Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting 272. End of November, almost end of the year. Clock is ticking, running out of time. All right, anyway, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. And this is going to be a straightforward meeting because we'll do triage. Um, and then we'll answer people's questions and comments. So things might come up. Um, we were just talking about Wix standard lib before the meeting a little bit, and I think it's going well. I just have a couple things to sort out to do that. Anyway, uh, if you're here, go ahead and say hi. Welcome to all of you in chat. Great to have you. Uh, let's go ahead and do triage. Bob, you ready? I think so. All right, triage. We have a few issues. Um, and uh, at the top, this one is closed. 7859. Um, something about build acceleration in Visual Studio. This is closed though. Why is this closed? Oh, they upgraded heat wave and everything went away. All right, great, fine. So fire giant fixed heat wave related to whatever this build acceleration thing is. All right, great. That could just go away, not a Wix bug. Anonymous director IDs are inconsistent. Yeah, I noticed this recently myself. Um, there's a slight difference in some directory paths. And they, um, given the way some of the subdirectories get created, they don't quite line up in some cases. I saw this as well. Uh, why don't you give this to me in five? Um, I want to look at this a little bit more, see if I can uh, make these more consistent. Um, because, yeah, I noticed this when I was fixing that issue very recently where the uh, director IDs uh, in different sections and all that stuff, Bob, if you remember that bug. I do. Um, yeah, so anyway, as I was going through that, I thought I saw this and I was like, yep, I did see that the director IDs are a little bit different on, in two, two different paths somewhere. Uh, 7862, add readmes. Yeah, we should do that. Who's gonna do that? I don't know what to write in them. Like, stuff. You know, have to do a survey of other packages that are good and do what they do. I don't know. I'll take it. All right. I don't know what to say at that level. Seems important, but I don't know what to say. Argument null exception in Visual Studio. This is not going to be a Wix bug. Our giant right in the stack trace. Yep. Not a Wix bug. That's great. Hey, did they give an example project? Yay, that's nice of them. Yep. All right, that goes, needs to go, not us. That goes over to Fire Giant. Not us here, us over there. <laughs> Different place. All right, cool. Not a Wix bug. 7866, macro configuration not expanding and post build when doing the simple post build thing. Yeah, this is a known issue. And, um, yep, this is, this is known. There's actually another issue in Heatwave where you need to go build it more the way of C Sharp. Basically, the issue here is that these post build, pre build event things don't, the way they worked in old MS Build style projects, not SDK style projects, they kind of worked just given the way the imports were. And then when they changed the way the imports work in SDK style, they changed them a lot. Now, a whole bunch of variables that people thought would be available very early in the build are not available. And so this, this is a very old way of doing things. It's not well supported. Um, and honestly, maybe we should just remove it from Wix or we should start warning about it being, maybe we should deprecate it in Wix 5 because it's just not the way to do things anymore. I thought the targets were still supported. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what they do now in C-sharp projects and SDK style C-sharp projects, they create a custom target now, right? They, they avoid, they don't even use pre-build, post-build event. It's not a thing anymore. You just create a custom target. You say after build or before build. Oh, right, right, right. There, now you have a target. Now you do your thing and everything works. The order of operations is correct. The problem is that, you know, if you use certain sets of variables that don't get set until later in the SDK style projects, well, these things don't work the way people expect them to. And you can explicitly import the SDK style projects. And so you put your post build 
event definition after the imports and then hey look everything works so i mean anyway so this isn't a wix bug this is if this is just a yeah you can't do that it doesn't work like that if you want to do it you have to do these things and honestly there's a there's a bug open in heatwave right now to change the design to create targets the way that c sharp does because that just works better okay and i wonder if we should put a warning that says hey you've defined your post build event i wonder if we can do that i don't know i guess they don't in c sharp but i don't know i don't want this issue i'm going to open another one um to uh, investigate how C Sharp handles a uh, post build event now. Basically, if you set post build event, do they give you a warning or anything saying, hey, this probably doesn't work the way you think it does? Um, but yeah, that's this is actually a dupe of a heat wave bug, I think, in the end. It okay. works as it's supposed to right now. What people expect has changed from the old way, and so they have to change how they do things. That's really what it comes down to. All right. All right. I'll, I'll hunt the heat wave bug then. Yeah, it's pretty easy. 7866. All right. So 7867. The component element contains unhandled exception. They didn't even fill out the template. They did not, and they have not responded to a request I left 10 days ago to. Tell this us is what's a going on. Probably they forgot to put the extension on the command line. Uh, that's an obvious guess, but. All right, this isn't a bug. Like, just close us a support and tell them to go ask questions somewhere else. Okay. Just probably forgot to add the extension on the command line. All right, seven eight seven two, dark. Hey, look, someone else decided. I'm. Uh, that's it. I'm. I'm taking time this week and I'm putting in the hardcore template. That's it. I'm. This is stupid. <coughs> um. Dark cannot find it. A custom file or a table definition, and then it just fails. Really? Well, it's also a dark error. So this is Wix three, and this is Wix. Th oh, it's Wix three. Dark. Yep. Uh, don't care. This is really strange that dark. I mean, I, I I immediately thought this was a Wix 4 issue because maybe something in Wix 4 decompile doesn't work. But you're right, this is dark. Uh, I don't care. Something is busted. Also non-responsive. Um, do we put it up for grabs or we just kill it? I'm fine closing it with a, you know, if you ever come, if you leave a comment, we'll reopen. All right. Yep. That is more than just the support question. Yep. 7874, when using MSI internal UI, uh, internal UI, BA, the MSI UI can appear behind the other windows. So I, this probably doesn't surprise me. There's all kinds of challenges getting the windows on top. Yep. All kinds of good stuff in here. All right. Oh, wait. Wait, all right. Well, you see the split close off screen on some callback after it displays the internal UI. I can see that. Yeah, that if, might. You know, Ugh. there's no there's no quote unquote parent window. Yeah, and, and and MSI UIs are weird windows. Like the way they create them is very weird. Um, so. Oh, another one is to leave the splash screen up the whole time. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> At least he knows the least desirable option. All right, cool. We'll leave this up for grabs and see if this guy wants to go dig into it. Um, okay. I agree with Jacob. Just make a bundle UI. But yeah. All right. 7877. ARP entry doesn't read uninstall string and doesn't support additional arguments. Well, the former is by design. Uh, I have a bug. 
find the stall stream it doesn't set a quite uninstall. Oh, so they have an XE that doesn't set quite uninstall. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 okay. Right. Um a failure saying quiet uninstall is null. Oh, that's that's not great. No. Okay, so that's that's bad. But they have an uninstall stream. But the uninstall stream is gonna mean like reading it would be public. ARP entry to fall back to reading uninstall string if there's no one. Well, yeah, except that this is designed to be a visible one. So I don't know if that's the right thing. It's not. It's not. We I went back. We we talked about this. I'm sure we did because this is with the devs. Yeah. Way back when. Oh, uh, really? that long ago. Yeah. Um, um, and we agreed. Uninstall string, you know, was not predictable. Might work, you know, like the the uninstall string that MSI writes would mostly work, but quiet uninstall string is what burn needs. So I think what we should do is in the case of this, where if you get an XC that is designed wrong, AK doesn't do the quiet uninstall string because you're supposed to set that. So if it doesn't set that, that we just let ARP entry override the uninstall command arguments. So then you can specify the quiet uninstall arguments to ARP. Yeah, that makes sense. That the the former does not, the latter does. So I, I like mean, the idea. But that way you could also override it. if the quiet uninstall string is like busted anyway. It's like if they yeah, put quiet, yeah. but it's not quiet, and you're like, ah, now you can win. You can say, no, you know what? I'm just going to take over the uninstall command, and ARP entry will do the detection for me. So you still get the win of the detection, and you right. can override the arguments. Yep. But it has to replace it. It can't, I don't think it can just add. No, uh, add, but, well, yeah, like, what if you want to remove? A, you know, like, the problem is the, there's a not, you know, dash verbose or whatever. Right, and that, right, you know, right. Just adding things on the end may or may not work. So yeah, no, I think that's that's a much more straightforward design. Plus, then there's no string concatenation. It's if the XC, if the ARP entry has an uninstall string, then use or uninstall command. No, um, well, it, yeah, it, it it shouldn't determine it. Around. Basically, if you specify. And yeah, we have to name it uninstall command, probably. Um, then always use that. Don't even look for quiet uninstall. Straight. Agreed. That's very easy. Yeah. That's very cool. straightforward. Okay. All right. Well, let's see the suggestion. I, I saw I opened a pull request. I saw the pull request first. That's what it was. I was like, what? Um, so let, let's make that proposed change. See if he wants to do that. Okay. We'll go from there. This part has set this part where uninstall failure. That's bad. Like it's like no, we shouldn't. Oh, it shouldn't fail. Yeah, it, yeah. You yeah, can't get stuck with it. It's like no, that's bad. All right. Um, seven eight eight one. Find and replace. This actually exists. Oh. Works for. I I created a custom action complete with extension support. Um to let you format a file. Great. Well, let's just close this as supported by a format file. Yep. All right. All right. Cool. That actually went pretty well. That was pretty good. So what do we get? We actually got more heat wave issues in here than most things. Heat wave. Heat wave-ish. I mean, yeah, heat wave needs to do a better job with that because I know it's generating it wrong right now. Um, that's the bug that I know is on Heatwave side. Uh, component probably support support dark. Don't know, but it's Wix three, so whatever. The internal UI and the ARP entry are the two real bugs. Yeah, that internal UI with MSI internal UI is going to be. Oof, that's going to be tricky. Waiting until an MSI UI window pops. Mm, that's going to be tricky. All right. Well, fun. Fun. Not so much. Okay, cool. Well, that is triage. Other things people want to talk about, think about, say, uh, going on out there. So I have almost everything I need for the Wix standard lib just about done. And I know that was holding up some of the stuff that Bob was doing, so I need to finish that. Um, 
I lost a couple weeks being sick, which didn't feel great. <laughs> um, but there's that. And I've been thinking a lot about the what I want to do for the burn out of proc thing, debating whether I want to change the protocol communication between the out of proc server or not to make it more friendly for other languages. So for those that, I'm going to talk here real quick in case so have people have a minute to you know type what they want and Bob you can chime in with on here. But one of the things I had was in Wix 4 there was the change to make the protocol between the UI and the engine more uh, defined, better defined as a bunch of structs that it sends back and forth, which is the way that Burn does it because it's C. You know you send structs back and forth over the communication pipe. Um, so I could keep that when moving the whole thing out of proc, I could keep using those same structs. And that will work for um, C, which will be you know one of the implementations, and then manage code, we'll write that implementation. It's driving force behind all of this um, because you know they can handle the whole convert to bytes and send over a name pipe kind of thing. I was thinking about doing something like instead of sending those structs, I was gonna encode them in something like you know, JSON to send over the pipe. The idea being that it would be easier for other languages to consume those things, uh, those the JSON strings, um, than raw blobs of bytes that you have to then decode in the correct order. Um, for other languages, if someone wants to write another language for the burn out of proc UI. I don't know how much all that matters. <laughs> The advantage of the out of proc UI is that you could write it in anything. Burn doesn't know. Burn doesn't need to know. Burn doesn't care. Right. It just has to be able to actually, communicate. It so, has, right. It has to communicate back with the protocol. We have a protocol. I could keep using it. Um, I was in my head thinking about switching to something like JSON because the thinking that any language could handle that um, easier. Um, but then there's all the overhead of converting all the silly messages to JSON and then decoding them back into not into the correct thing, which is just overhead. Or I could just send the byte streams like they are now back and forth. Yeah, I I, I don't have a problem with using the current structs. Um, you know, any any language that has you know a good that has good C ABI compatibility is going to be fine with that. Yeah. Um, and if it doesn't, then, you know, they're probably used to, you know, needing a, a C layer to talk to the higher level language. Yeah. But, you know, all the, all the big ones, Rust, Swift, uh, even, even your Lua's, um, are, are going to be fine. The advantage of avoiding JSON too is that it means Burn doesn't have to know how to read JSON. Writing yeah. JSON is trivial. Reading it, well, is less trivial. Yeah, it does. Like the idea of avoiding JSON in the engine. Yeah, and if we can, right. if it's reasonable. Yeah. So, Jacob, I I wouldn't add more code to the burn engine to support multiple formats that that's like here let's have code to do the same thing two different ways that just bloats burn for no real reason like we need to pick one pick one and then go from there um yeah i just kept going back over the structs going i mean json in the end what am i doing i'm going to encode all this i'm going to take numbers turn them into utf8 <laughs> characters yeah and then drop them as bytes in this thing what am what did i i win <laughs> and well I, the only thing that comes to mind is you know at some point maybe you know the i don't know variable length messages maybe you know there there's a benefit to abandoning a fixed struct mm -hmm. and and going with something that's inherently more flexible if we think we might end up there then there's the, you know, well, now's the time kind of thing. But yeah, like, you know, I thought about bringing like Proto, Protobuf, sure. 
yep. and, or message pack. I'm like, yep. it's just bigger libraries that are just going to make burn bigger and drag in all of their dependencies, which aren't always designed to operate in a space where you want to have zero dependencies because the engine needs to start ideally no matter what. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it can at least it has to be all statically linked, at least statically linked and run on, you know, the lowest operating system that we're going to support without any issues and ideally not grow simply for this message passage thing, passing thing, which we already have as structs. And I was like, right. am I, what am I doing here? <laughs> like, we already have the structs. We're already using that. We've already been through two versions now with the structs. All I'm doing is converting these into JSON. And then turning them back into the silly little structs again. <laughs> I'd say, hmm, what if I just send these structs instead? Yeah. Which is, you know, dirty and low level, but the level that burns operating right there is dirty and low level. So um now does that mean um <sighs> I had a question. Ah, does you're talking bytes. Um does that mean you're giving up on on standard in, standard out? Yeah, so I keep going standard in, standard out, and I just keep finding all these downsides to it. So, okay. um, for example, stealing it is one of the big things. What if I can't have it? Um, and so that was kind of one of the things, like, yeah, this is just gets weird. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think that's not the way to go. Also, because yep. burn already does the thing. <laughs> where it connects over a pipe, not over standard and standard out. So essentially all this is doing, as I got into the guts of it, I was like, you know, this is, this almost works already. Like what, what I'm doing, which is why I think it just made so much sense. Once I realized I was like, oh, this, we're already doing this. We just need to finish to stop pretending like we're going to write an XE host for everything in the world. And, don't write an XE host. <laughs> and then everything else just works. It's like, ah, uh, I don't need, just take everything that you need to communicate with burn, put it in a library and there go there. Now write an XE that uses this library. Ta-da, problem right, solved. Right. And now I don't have to own the XE, which means now that XE can become whatever you want it to be. Right. And gets us out of all classes of problems. So that's like, uh, this is already up a lot so of close. Stuff. I'm I'm very much in favor of of the XE approach. Not only does it solve some of the weirdnesses that I've seen with even just up, well, I have a pull request out to upgrade to support Visual Studio 17.8 because the even though Sember says it shouldn't, Visual yeah. Studio 17.8 breaks the Wix build in a couple of ways, um, and you know. We're we're starting to see the 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 oddities of needing to host .NET Core. Oh yeah, yeah. The, 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 that that's why this has to go on five. We have to get away from it. It's just yeah, they are so going to break us. <laughs> well, guess what? They did. I mean, it doesn't right, right, right. I didn't know that that was a problem with seventeen point eight, but I'm glad to hear that is a problem with seventeen point eight because that doesn't surprise me. Like you said, so the .NET hosting, the hosting of .NET broke in seventeen point eight. I'm like, oh, you mean when .NET eight came out? Yeah, okay, fine. Even more. Yep. Well, to be clear, this is just the building of it. Uh, I uh, I don't even know if I don't know how the hosting works now. Yeah, yeah so I'm out. Like that's yeah. it, it's just the whole thing does not work. Need to get out of that need to not be our problem. Yep. Yep. So, okay. so yes, this is, that's why I need to get the Wixlip thing done so I could then get this done. Fortunately, the burn stuff should be, if it's just the structs, then that's easier. And technically speaking, I don't have to re-implement the C communication. I could just create a C sharp wrapper around it, but I really would like to provide a pure C implementation to get rid of the native code on the C sharp side. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm actually going to recreate the structs, but um, we're going to see how, how well that goes. Cause uh, there's more than a couple structs to do. Yeah. Um, anyway, so um, 
all of this will be wrapped up in a whip here, rolled up into a whip here in a bit, but I've just been like poking at this thing for a while going, how do I want to do this? So, That's how it starts. Yeah, well, I was I thought JSON would be an interesting way to solve some of the interoperability problems, but I think it's just more complexity than should exist in the world that Burn operates in. If that's really what it comes down to. If Burn was just an app, I'd be thinking it differently, but it's, its bootstrapping problems are so narrow that bringing in lots of extra uh, work to make it a, a friendlier platform to possible unknown futures, uh, yeah, that's hard yeah, to yeah. do. That's hard to do. Great. Yagni. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Well, no other questions have come up. People are just listening to us ramble about this thing. Um, that's it. I think we're we're good to go. Two weeks. We're starting to get into holiday time, aren't we? Here. Ooh, two that's weeks be. might be it. Right. Um, One after that is the twenty sixth. Well, technically speaking, that's possible, right? Um, Depends on what I'm doing on the 25th. Seriously? All right. Your, your well, 25th no, is way more exciting than mine then. Um, well, yeah, I don't have kids, so. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, so definitely the 12th. We'll do December 12th. That's definitely a thing. And I think at that meeting, we'll decide whether we're going to do the 26th or whatnot. Um, 26th. And then the one after that would be the 9th. So that works. Or we could skip yeah. and go to the 2nd. Because people oh, don't party on, on New Year's night, right? Or, <laughs> Again, I don't have kids, so. I mean, there's New Year's Eve. But, like, do people party on New Year's night? You know, like, aren't most people just recovering from whatever they did on New Year's Eve? Anyway, looking ahead too far, we'll do the December 12th. We'll do all this again. Triage, see what's going on in the world. Um, and there will be more progress on the Wix 5 things because the clock is ticking. And I'm very aware of that. Um, and that will be that, right? I think so. All right. So, uh, we'll be back in two weeks and we'll do all this stuff again. And see you guys later. Bye. Bye.